In this lecture here, I want to talk about the combination of functions and composite functions. And there's going to be a lot of function notation in this, and um, there's going to be a lot of operations on functions. And throughout this lecture here, I'm going to be working a number of examples to help clarify the topics. So what we're going to work through here is the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the domain of a function. Then we're going to combine functions using the algebra of functions, uh, specifying the domains. We're going to form composite functions. We're going to determine domains of composite functions. And then we're going to write functions as compositions. OK, so a lot to go through here. So we'll start with the easy stuff. So this is about first finding a function's domain. So a function f does not model data or verbal conditions. Its domain is the largest set of real numbers for which the value of f of x is a real number. OK, so really what you're doing is like, you, you're just trying to find the domain of some type of, you know, function here. So what you're looking at here is if I were to plug in any values, would the function be undefined or would I get an imaginary number? So what you're going to do is you're going to exclude from a function's domain real numbers that would cause division by zero um, and real numbers that result in an even root, such as the square root of a negative number. So just as I said here, so like if you were to take the square root of a negative number, you get an imaginary number. Can't do it. All right, let's look at this one here. So let's find the domain of this function. g of x is equal to um, 5x divided by x squared minus 49. OK, so we have a rational function here. So what you're going to do is you're going to look when this x squared minus 49 is equal to 0, because you're going to get a divide by 0 here. So right, you would just factor this. This factors into x plus 7 times x minus 7. It's the, the difference of two squares. And you would see here, just using the zero multiplication property here, right, that you would get x is equal to negative 7 or 7. So what's going on here is whenever you were to plug in negative 7 or 7 into this, you would get a divide by 0. So you know that would be an undefined. So the domain here is x cannot equal uh, negative 7 or 7. Or putting it in interval notation, the domain is negative infinity to negative 7. Union, and then you're going to go with all numbers from negative 7 to 7. And then you're going to pick up again 7 to infinity. All right. Basically, what you're doing here is you're saying, OK, go all the way up to negative 7. Can't be negative 7. But start right after that and go all the way to 7. But can't be 7. And then it can be everything after. Let's do another one, OK? Let's find the domain of this. Let's look at some function f of x is equal to the square root of 2x minus 7. All right, so what's going on here is, right, you can't have a negative um, uh, uh, underneath the radical, OK? So you, you're going to look for what's underneath the radical always has to be greater than or equal to 0. Right, So you'd add the 7 over, divide by 2. And x, long as x is greater than or equal to 7 halves, OK, this is good. All right, so the domain here would be, you'd go from 7 halves to infinity. All right, can't be anything less than 7 halves, because then you would get a negative underneath the radical. All right, so now let's talk about the algebra of functions. OK, so we're going to talk about the sum, difference, product, and quotient of functions. All right, so let's let f and g be two functions. The sum, f plus g, the difference, f minus g, the product, f times g, and the quotient, f divided by g, are functions themselves. OK, so, so when you perform these operations, you create a new function, OK, whose domain are the set of all real numbers common to the domains of the original functions, f and g. Okay, and it's defined as the following here. So if you were to see something that looks like this, in parentheses, f plus g of x. Okay, what this means is take the function f of x and add it to g of x. f minus g of x, this is equal to f of x minus g of x. f times g of x, well, that's just f of x times g of x. And then obviously, f divided by g of x is just f of x divided by g of x. So let's work some examples where we perform this, the, these four algebraic functions, or algebraic um, algebra on, on some functions here. So let's take this. So here'll be our first example. So let's say f of x is equal to x minus 5, 
and g of x is equal to x squared minus 1. Let's find the following. So the first thing we want to do, let's find f plus g of x. Well, that's just f of x plus g of x. All right, so that's x minus 5 plus x squared minus 1. Well, look, I can just rewrite this as x squared plus x, and then minus 5 minus 1 gets me minus 6. Ah, so you can see it's pretty straightforward. f minus g of x, that's just f of x minus g of x. So that's f of x, which is x minus 5 minus, and then in parentheses, x squared minus 1. So this becomes minus x squared plus x minus 5 minus minus becomes plus 1. So minus 5 plus 1 gets me minus 4. Uh, let's try this one. Let's try, try f times g of x. Okay, well that's just f of x times g of x. Okay, well that's just x minus 5 times g of x, which is x squared minus 1. Well, you're going to have to FOIL this, right? x times x squared gets me x cubed. x times minus 1 gets me minus x. Minus 5 times x squared gets me minus 5x squared. And minus 5 times minus 1 gets me plus 5. So this is just in standard form here is x cubed minus 5x squared minus x plus 5. And then let's find this last one here, d. Let's look at f divided by g of x. So that's just f of x divided by g of x. So here, this is just x minus 5 divided by x squared minus 1, which you can even write as x minus 5 times x plus 1, x minus 1. And so look, when you want to go find the domain of these resulting functions, you know, like you can look here, right? The, do the domain of all of these, you know, they're just polynomial functions is all real numbers. But here you go, you know, what you, you look at this and you say, okay, you know, what, what values would make a divide by zero? So it'd be negative one and one. So the domain would be negative infinity to negative one, union negative one to one union, one to infinity. But at least I hope, you know, performing the algebraic, uh, algebraic, you know, properties here, algebraic problems on the function here should be, should be very straightforward. It's just straight up following the formula. Okay, let's try another one here, just so we can make sure we understand it. So let's consider these functions. Let's look at f of x is equal to x squared minus 2x, and g of x is equal to the square root of x plus 1. So I'll just do, I'm not going to do all of them again, but you know, just so you can see here, right? So if I were to ask you to find f minus g of x, okay, well that's just f of x minus g of x. So that would just be x squared minus 2x minus the square root of x plus 1. And then even finally, if I were to just ask you to find f divided by g of x, that would be f of x divided by g of x. So that would be x squared minus 2x over the square root of x plus 1. And look here, you, you, you can see the resulting domain of these two functions is going to be a little bit different, right? So if you were to look here, the domain here, you know, you can't have a negative underneath the radical, so it would be negative 1 to infinity. And the domain here, you can't have a divide by 0, so it would be slightly different. It wouldn't actually include negative 1. All right. Uh, let's move on. Let's now talk about the composition of functions. Okay, so the composition of the function f and g, okay, so the composition of f with g is denoted f 
It looks like fog. This looks like a zero, but this is F composition G, okay? So you read this F composition G and is defined by the following. So when you see this, it's F of F composition G of X. All you're gonna do is you're gonna take G of X and plug it into F of X. Take, you know, the function G of X, plug into F of X, okay? So the domain of the composite function F composition G is a set of all X such that X is in the domain of G, okay? And G of X is in the domain of F, all right? Um, I'm going to just show you how to do a composition of a function, and then I will talk about how you do uh, find the domain first. But so let's just first figure out how you find uh, composition of functions, okay? So let's try this one. So you're given f of x is equal to 5x plus 6, and g of x is equal to 2x squared minus x minus 1. I want to find f composition g of x. All right, so just what we're so we're clear here. This is f, and then what we're plugging into it is g of x. Okay, so this is my f of x. It's five times x, so it's five times the input, and then plus six. But what am I inputting? I'm inputting g of x in for x now. Well, what is g of x? It's just this right here. It's two x squared minus x minus one plus six. All right, so now let's find, you know, now let's just simplify this, right? So distribute the five, so this gives me 10 x squared minus five x minus five, and then plus six. Well, minus five plus six gives me 10 x squared minus five x plus one. So you're just taking g of x and plugging it into f of x here. <clears throat> let's try this one. Uh, let's have f of x be equal to x squared um, minus 3 and g of x be equal to the square root of 2x plus 1. All right, so I want to find f composition g of x. So that's f of g of x. Well, what is my f of x first? Well, that's input squared minus three. And what am I inputting? I'm inputting now g of x. Well, what is g of x? Okay. Here, this is g of x. So this is the square root of two x plus one squared minus three. Well, square root squared, this is just two x plus one now, minus three. Well, this is just two x minus two. And so you have to be careful here, right? So if you were to say, okay, well, what is the domain of this? If you were to just look at this, you'd say, oh, the domain is all real numbers. But that's not the case, right? Because you'd have this radical here. So the domain still has to be values that don't have a negative under here. So it'd be negative one half to infinity. Okay, because if you were to set this equal to zero and solve, you'd get negative one half. All right, let's, let's, let's go back. And let me do a, a better example of talking about the domain. Okay, so so suppose this is talking about you know how I really quickly found the domain here. Let's do a, a much more in-depth example. Okay, so the following must when you when you want to find the domain of um, f, it says f circle g. So this is f composition g of x. Okay, the following must be excluded from the input x. If x is not in the domain of g, it must not be in the domain of the f composition g, which is what we saw here. And any x for which g of x is not in the domain of f, okay, must not be in the domain of f composition g. Okay. Let's do some let's do some problems here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a composition here. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to find uh, the domain. So it's going to be a little, little bit tricky. All right, so first I've got f of x and g of x. Let's find f composition g of x, just so you can see here. So this is f of g of x. So this is 4. And now instead of x, 
Okay, I'm plugging in 1 over x plus 2. All right, so I have to simplify this. Okay, I have to simplify this. So this is going to be 4 over, I'm going to write this as 1 over x plus 2x over x, so just so they have a common denominator here. So this is 4 over 1 plus 2x over x. Keep, change, flip. So this is 4 times x over 1 plus 2x. So this just simplifies to 4x over 1 plus 2x. Okay, so this is what f composition g of x is. f composition g of x is equal to. So now I've got this new function, okay? Now I want to find the domain of this function. Okay, so here's what you need to do. You need to exclude the values that are not in the domain of g. Okay, so what values are not in the domain of g? Okay, you can't have zero. Okay, so going back just so just so you see, g of x you cannot have zero. Okay, All right. So you know you look at f composition g of x. What is not in the domain of g? Boom! Right there. Then you look at the the resulting function. Okay, and you say, oh well, I, uh, let me look at this function now. What values would make you know this d divide by zero? So if you were to set the denominator equal to zero, you would also see that you can't have um, x be equal to negative one half because that would get a divide by zero. So next step is what is not in the domain of the resulting function. Well, boom, you see right there, you, you got it, okay? So then you'd say next is the domain is, well, you'd have to go, all right, well, you'd go from negative infinity, I can't be negative one half, so you'd have open circle, you'd union with negative one half to zero, open, open bracket here, excuse me, not open circle, open bracket, and then union with zero to infinity. All right, let's, let's end now by talking about writing a function as a composition. Okay, so I've got this h of x, all right, and I want to write it as the composition of two functions. So do you notice here h of x, all right, it's the square root of x squared plus 5. So it's the square root of something. So think about this as the outside, and this is the inside. Okay, so can I write the inside as a function? So let's define the inside, some function g of x as x squared plus five. And then let's define the outside, f of x, as just this, the outside. So the outside is the square root of just x. So now the next question becomes then is h of x now the composition of these two functions. Well, it's the square root of g of x now. Well, what is g of x? Yes, it is, we got it, okay? So we now wrote this as the composition of two different functions here. All right, class, uh, a lot to cover in this, in this lecture here, and you'll get a chance, as always, to practice this on your uh, weekly assignment.